Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at drawing the shear and moment diagram of this simply supported beam. It has a total length of 6 feet and it has a point load right in the middle and that value is 5 kips. And in this particular video we're actually going to do this the simple and, and graphical way and in the next video we're, we're actually going to look at some of the internal shears and moments of the same exact scenario and draw the shear moment diagrams using that approach. But in this example, we're going to go ahead and draw a free body diagram, then figure out how that free body diagram will give us our shear diagram, and then from there we can derive our moment diagram. The very first thing I want to do is go ahead and draw the free body diagram. So I'm going to create the beam here of the same exact length, and I know that this point load is right in the middle of this span, so that means the reactions on our left and our right are going to be the same. So what are those reactions? Well, if we have a point load right here down the middle, and that's 5 kips, then the reaction here on this left side is going to be 2.5 kips, and the reaction here on the right side is also going to be 2.5 kips. Now that's good. I'm also going to go ahead and label the points, important points, along this free body diagram just so we can use these as reference later on. So A, B, and C. A represents the pin at the left, B represents the point load in the middle, and C represents the roller support at the very right-hand side of this beam. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and draw the shear diagram. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that same line here, and it's going to be the same exact length, L of 6 feet. And the easiest way I like to draw these shear moment diagrams, especially for these very simple cases, is just look at the free body diagram and let the loads draw the shears for us. So we know at the very left hand side we have this two and a half kips and it's being pushed up. So you can think of this reaction pushing the shear up to this point and that's going to be 2.5 kips here. And then we don't have any other load between points A and B so this shear diagram is actually going to be constant all the way until we get to point B. So this is point B at the very top. It's still going to be 2.5 kips. But now we have this 5 kips of force pushing the shear diagram back down. And how much does it go back down? Well, it goes, it goes down 5 kips. So if we take 2.5 and, and we subtract 5 from it, we're going to get negative 2.5 kips down here. And again, we don't have any forces between points B and C. So we're going to have this constant shear all the way up to point C. And then we have this reaction here, 2.5 kips. So that 2.5 kips is going to push the shear diagram back up to 0. Why? Because this was negative 2.5 kips, right? And if we take negative 2.5 kips and we add to it this 2.5 kips, this positive 2.5 kips, we're going to get 0. So this is our shear diagram, shear. And what I like doing on these shear diagrams is I like actually pointing out the positive and negative areas because we're going to use that to determine what the moment diagram is. So any shear that is above this zero axis, or let's just call it the x axis, is going to be positive and anything below is going to be negative. And this is really important because we're going to use these concepts of positive and negative shear to get our moment diagram graphically. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down just a little bit so we can get some more room. And down here, we're going to go ahead and draw our moment diagram. So the easiest way to get the values for the moment diagram is actually to look at our shear values. Because if we derive the equation that we get for our moment diagram, we're actually going to get the shear diagram or the shear diagram values. And that's really important because the values at the shear diagram are actually the slopes of any point along the moment diagram. So we know that at the very left hand side, or this point A, we had a pin support, and we know that pins do not support moments. So we know that the moment on the very far left, point A, is zero. And I'm going to go ahead and draw this M, which stands for moment diagram. And all the units here are going to be kip foot. So we know that between points A and B, the shear is actually constant. It's a constant 2.5 kips from A all the way to B. And that's important because that tells us that the slope along the moment diagram between points A and point B is actually going to be linear. So it's actually going to go all the way up to this point, which is point B. 
but we need to know what value this point is. And the easiest way to determine the values of the moment diagrams in simple cases like this is actually to calculate the areas under the curves of the shear diagram. So between points A and B, the area underneath this curve is really just this 2.5 times this distance, right? And this distance is three feet. Remember L was six feet and L over two therefore is three feet. So if we take 2.5 times three foot, we're gonna get 7.5 kip foot for the moment diagram at the very top. And now if we look between points B and point C, we know that the shear is negative. So that means the slope along the moment diagram from point B to point C is actually gonna be negative. So the moment diagram is going to decrease all the way down here to zero. So this is point C and the value there is also zero. And why do we know that it's zero using just the graphical method? Well, if we take the area under the curve of the shear diagram between points A and C, because we're looking at point C, we should get a value of zero, right? So let's do this in a different color. If I take the area under the curve for this shear diagram, we should get zero, right? So 2.5 kips times three feet, and that's a positive area, right? Up here between points A and B, and then down here between point B and C, it's gonna be a negative 2.5 times three feet, so minus 2.5 kips times three feet, and that is obviously zero. Well, what if I wanted any other value along the moment diagram? So let's say halfway between point B and C, so that is gonna be a total distance of four and a half feet, right? Well, then we would take the area under the shear diagram all the way up to that same point here. So what is that value? Well, between points A and B, we know it's going to be 2.5 kips times 3 feet, and then we're going to add to it this area between B and halfway between B and C, so this area right here. Well, that's negative 2.5 kips times 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 and that totals to be 3.75 kip foot. So this value right here is 3.75 kip foot. And there you go, the shear and moment diagram for a pretty simple case, a beam with a point load right at the middle. In the next video, we're actually gonna look at the same exact scenario, but we're gonna break down the internal forces and use those values to get the same shear and moment diagrams. All right, see you then.